வணக்கம் கிளைனோடாக்டலி இஸ் நத்திங் பட் சைட்வேஸ் இன்க்ளினேஷன் ஆஃப் த ஃபிங்கர் இட் குட் பி த ஃபிங்கர் ஆர் த தம் பட் வென் லேர்னிங் அபவுட் கிளைனோடாக்டலி வி ஷெல் லேர்ன் அ லாட் ஆஃப் நியூ கான்செப்ட்ஸ் த லாங்கிடியூட்னல் எபிஃபைசியல் பிராக்கெட் த டெல்டா ஃபேலங்ஸ் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆஸ்டியோட்டமி the opening wedge osteotomy closing wedge osteotomy and the reverse wedge osteotomy and a very new procedure called physiolysis all this in this video the term congenital clinodactyly refers to a digit with congenital angular deformity in the radio ulnar or coronal plane distal to the metacarpophalangeal joint and this is defined as an angulation more than 10 degrees varying from more than 8 degrees to more than 15 degrees the word is derived from greek klinia which means to bend incline or slope and dactylos which means finger or toe The first description of clinodactyly was in 1896 by Smith when he reported on radiographic findings of clinodactyly and the association with down syndrome. Congenital clinodactyly usually affects the middle phalanx of the little finger or the proximal phalanx of the thumb. The deformity arises because of one or more of the phalanges is either triangular or trapezoidal in shape. As a result of this the alignment of the adjacent IP joint is deviated away from perpendicular to the normal longitudinal axis of the finger this abnormal shape progresses with age in the child as a result of ongoing symmetric longitudinal growth of the phalanx though most clinodactyly occurs as a congenital anomaly there are also acquired causes which include trauma to the growth plate from injury frostbite or inflammatory arthritis with symmetric physial closure or even bone tumors which can produce a secondary angular deformity the clinical presentation is most commonly as an isolated radial inclination of the little finger owing to the middle phalanx adopting a triangular or trapezoidal shape this form of clinodactyly may be inherited as an autosomal dominant trait and is often bilateral Clinodactyly of the index finger and thumb can also be seen as part of many syndromes and complex hand anomalies even the middle finger can be involved in clinodactyly the basic problem causing this abnormally shaped phalanx is an abnormal growth plate which is a c shaped physial plate extending to some extent along one side of the bone forming a bracket that restricts longitudinal growth on one side of the bone it is described by jones in his description of triangular or delta phalanges in severe clinodactyly it was originally described as longitudinally bracketed diaphysis but later it was termed as longitudinal epiphyseal bracket because it was found that the epiphysis was the incriminating structure Adrian Flatt has described the three stages of growth in this longitudinal bracketed epiphysis. The epiphysis is entirely cartilaginous and extends the length of the phalanx at 7 months of age. The proximal and distal secondary ossification centers begin to appear on x-rays at 19 months of age. At 8 years of age the proximal secondary ossification center fuses with a persistent distal secondary ossification center to create one epiphysis that spans the length of the digit when the bracket epiphysis completely bridges between the proximal and distal physis no longitudinal growth is possible on this side of the bone and a short triangular bone otherwise known as the delta phalanx is produced when the bracket is incomplete some longitudinal growth occurs and the phalanx is trapezoidal as we have seen earlier the epiphyseal bracket commonly affects the middle phalanx it can also occur in the proximal phalanx of the thumb in apert syndrome or within the extra phalanx in hyperphalangism or triphalangeal thumb 
It can also occur as a dual or kissing delta phalanx in Rubinstein Tabby syndrome and the Senani lens syndactyly. The kissing delta phalanx refers to two delta phalanges in the place of a single normal phalanx. These two delta phalanges may be unequal delta phalanges, incomplete kissing delta phalanges, or double kissing delta phalanges. This picture shows the delta phalanx involving the thumb in Rubinstein Tabby syndrome. This shows the characteristic X ray appearance of the delta phalanx where the physis have not yet fused and where the physis have fused. The commonly used classification system for clinodactyly is the Cooney classification, which was proposed in 1991. Simple clinodactyly refers to deformity of the middle phalanx where the angulation is less than 45 degrees and not associated with any other deformity. Simple complicated clinodactyly again refers to deformity of the middle phalanx with more than 45 degrees of angulation, again not associated with any deformity. Complex clinodactyly refers to deformity not only of the bone but also of soft tissues with less than 45 degrees of angulation. It could be associated with syndactyly and complex complicated clinodactyly refers again to bone and soft tissue deformity with more than 45 degrees of angulation. It could be associated with deformities like polydactyly or macrodactyly. Most of the patients with isolated clinodactyly of the little finger present with an aesthetic rather than a functional problem. These little fingers mostly do not scissor over or under the ring finger, thus making the deformity more an aesthetic than a functional problem. Scissoring can also be prevented by abducting the little finger at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Surgery should be avoided in these cases because any improvement in appearance occurs at the risk of scarring and stiffness. Dr. Adrian Flatt commenting on this has said, I rarely operate on overlapping fingers despite parents' desires unless the finger overlaps on fist making. This overlap deprives the hand of the valuable ulnar border locking of grasp provided by the most ulnar digit. The main indications for surgical correction are clinodactyly with shortening and angulation of at least 30 degrees or when the radial digits or thumb are involved and angular deformity interferes with pinch. But it can be categorically said that there is no role for splinting in congenital clinodactyly. The surgical management of congenital clinodactyly consists of a few components of surgery like closing wedge osteotomy, opening wedge osteotomy with or without bone graft, reversed wedge osteotomy, release of soft tissues on the concave side, tightening of soft tissues on the convex side, and a procedure called physiolysis. Closing wedge osteotomy is advised for moderate and severe deviations. A small wedge of bone is removed from the middle portion of the middle phalanx on the convex side of the digit. The finger is then aligned, closing the defect, and retrograde K wires are used to stabilize the osteotomy. The disadvantage of this procedure is that the affected finger will be further shortened as can be seen in this clinical example. The shortening of the index finger is very obvious after the correction of the angulation. An open wedge osteotomy lengthens the digit the most, hence it is the most preferred. An osteotomy is created on the concave aspect of the middle phalanx at the midpoint of the phalanx. The transverse osteotomy should involve both the longitudinal epiphyseal bracket and the diaphysis. Before completion of the osteotomy, a retrograde K wire is passed across the radial aspect of the distal interphalangeal joint to stabilize the joint before correction of the deformity so that the correction will occur at the osteotomy site and not through the joint. The K wire is then advanced and a second K wire is placed for rotational stability. In older children, a bone graft will have to be used to fill the gap. 
In more severe deviations, however, the bone correction only will not be enough. We will need to do a release of the soft tissue that is the collateral ligaments and the skin on the contracted side. The thenar musculature at its insertion in the radially deviated thumb should also be released otherwise the deformity will recur. Tightening of the soft tissue structures especially collateral ligaments on the convex side will also be useful. Because the digit is going to get longer after the procedure we should make sure that the skin can accommodate this increased length usually by incorporating a z-plasty on the concave side as shown in this picture or by the use of bilobe flaps as shown in this picture. In less severe deviations a reverse wedge osteotomy works well but it is technically more demanding. A wedge of bone is removed from the middle portion of the middle phalanx on the convex side of the digit. The bone is then reversed and placed into the middle phalanx from the concave side of the digit to correct the alignment. The advantage of this reverse wedge osteotomy is that no other donor site is necessary because a bone graft will not be required. Just like the open wedge technique, the graft is transfixed with a percutaneous K wire. These x-rays show the result after reverse wedge osteotomy. We have learnt that it is the epiphyseal bar which is the basic cause of clinodactyly. To address this problem in younger children, Jones first described division of the continuous epiphyseal bracket in 1964. In 1987, Vickers described a new technique added on to this, that is division of the epiphyseal bar with a fat graft and named this procedure physiolysis. This technique consists of excising the continuous region of the epiphysis and diaphysis in the isthmic region of the middle phalanx via a lateral incision. The bone is further removed in this region with a burr or curette till bleeding cancellous bone of the diaphysis is seen. The remaining gap is now filled with a fat graft from either the digit or the wrist. It works well in younger children under 6 years of age with less severe clinodactyly and a trapezoidal phalanx. This shows a clinodactyly of the thumb. A Z-shaped incision is made on the concave side. The physiolysis procedure is done. The deformity is opened out and a fat graft as you can see in the picture has been inserted and closure of the now lengthened thumb is done by transposing the Z-plasty flaps. A subcutaneous K-wire has been used to stabilize the thumb and also help in healing. We have seen many modes of surgical management of congenital clinodactyly. Let us summarize the management protocols. At any age, if there is less than 30 degree angulation with no functional limitation, counseling and reassurance are all that is required. In children below 6 years of age with more than 30 degree angulation, and a trapezoidal shaped bone, physiolysis is the advisable procedure. In children older than 6 years of age with more than 30 degree angulation, an osteotomy is the preferred treatment protocol. If it is a smaller angulation, a closing wedge osteotomy is ideal. But if the angulation is a little larger, either an opening wedge osteotomy or a reverse wedge osteotomy can be done. The post-operative care is as follows. For closing wedge technique, 3 weeks of immobilization is enough. For reverse and open wedge osteotomies, 4 to 6 weeks of immobilization is required since a bone graft has been applied. For physiolysis technique, the operated finger can just be taped to the adjacent finger for 2 weeks. But if the thumb is involved, a K-wire needs to be inserted inside for 2 weeks. As far as the outcomes of surgical management of congenital clinodactyly are concerned, reversed wedge osteotomies normally heal well. Slight angulations in the dorsal palmar plane following surgery mostly disappear during growth. In open wedge osteotomies, 
Skin and ligament release can be insufficient, leading to skin tightness and recurrence of angulation. In physiolysis, results in children over 6 years are not as good as in younger children. Furthermore, it works well in less severe clinodactylies. The possible complications seen are bone malunion or malrotation. Non-union in children is very rare. Even if the x-ray demonstrates a non-consolidated osteotomy, the fibrous tissue bridging the two parts can prevent movement and will have no clinical implications. Extensor tendon additions can result in a mallet-like deformity. In some cases, stiffness of joints can occur, but pain is rarely an issue. Like in all surgeries for congenital hand problems, secondary procedures may be required to address the recurrence of deviation which has occurred due to either insufficient release or excision of the physis or by inadequate soft tissue release. And to correct this, a new osteotomy and soft tissue release will be required. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about other congenital conditions like the cleft hand and congenital syndactyly. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics.